Hello there, it's Maggie here, the Cheshire Crafter. Uh, I'm in Southport still and I'm sitting by the desk, by the window, in my hotel room and the sun is cracking the flags. It's Friday of the Jubilee weekend and although the day started a little bit cloudy and raining, you know, the sun's absolutely cracking the flags now. I'm in a south facing, um, south facing space. I can't open the window while I'm talking to you but as soon as I've finished doing this and recording this on the hotel uh, Wi-Fi, using the hotel Wi-Fi rather than my own mobile uh, Wi-Fi units up. Um, I thought I'd, I'd um, follow up on my Royal Stories and after the last ones that I did, if you haven't seen them, go back and have a look. Uh, I did one on the, the Duke of Westminster, one on Diana and I'm, I'm sorry if the Diana one upset over anybody or, or uh, it was quite sad wasn't it? So I wanted to re relate some stories that have that are funnier today and uh, I also put things on about the um, Jubilee and I, I just put a few little short funnies on about possibly what was said on the balcony you know what was the conversation little Louis stole the show so uh, flip back if you've got a few minutes just flip back on that it's just my sense of humour um, so I want to follow on from um, the story about Diana, I told you she was um, the patron of the Chester Childbirth Appeal and that uh, Natalia, the Duke of Westminster, Duke, sorry, Duchess of Westminster, filled in for her. Diana, as patron, was going to open, uh, going to open the unit officially. And after she died, the uh, Duchess of Westminster, Natalia, agreed to come and open it on her behalf, which was very kind of her. Uh, when you consider that um, the, the family were grieving, um, they still had a lot of um, appointments and engagements to fulfil and had to fill a lot of events in the royal calendar and the royal diary, diaries. And I was very grateful to be invited. So um, the, the, the meet and greet with her was actually at the Countess of Chester Hospital, named after Diana, and was in the antenatal clinic waiting area. And in preparation for her coming, they decided that it needed a bit of a bit of a zhuzh, a bit of a revamp. And uh, they decided to wallpaper it. So liquor paint, bit of wallpaper. I think the royals must be used to that. The smell of fresh paint wherever they go. Uh, but anyway, they, they wallpapered it. Lovely, lovely um, job they did, except where they put the wallpaper on upside down. I think there was a repeating floral pattern and they hadn't noticed that there was a whole section where they'd put the paper on upside down. So Muggins, me, was told, um, go there, Mag, stand in front of that. <laughs> stand. I was a bit thinner then as well. Wouldn't have covered up much wallpaper, but stand there, don't move. Uh, distract everybody so they're not looking at the wallpaper behind you. Well, I don't know whether I did a good job. I don't know whether she ever noticed, uh, <laughs> but uh, we, we knew we knew that they'd done that in the uh, antenatal clinic and the wallpaper was upside down. Now, I found her to be delightful, uh, very uh, well presented, represents, uh, represented um, herself very well. Um, I do have a story and this related to, um, in my 30s, I shared a house uh, in Chester and uh, one of the uh, friends that I shared a house with, uh, I'm not going to name him, but um, he had qualified at university with a, a degree in design engineering and he, he had accessed a sponsorship deal with the Duke and Duchess of Westminster. They had workshops on their um, Grosvenor estate and invited newly qualified to come on a two-year program to develop to develop um, their skills, especially you might, they might do design, but it was the marketing and bringing the product to market. And really, this is what the uh, charity was there to support. So he was on this program, and his brother was a dentist and found that there was a gap in the market. I shouldn't mention gap when I'm talking about teeth, should I? But uh, there was a gap in the market and his brother said, we've got a real problem. Uh, now I'm talking, I'm going back 30 years here, so things might have moved on since then. But at that time, there was a real problem with dentists trying to access 
uh, hospitals, nursing homes, residential homes, and taking their much needed equipment with them in a way that uh, the equipment was readily accessible, but it was mobile. So it had to be on wheels, it had to be lightweight, and uh, he had designed something uh, with the help of his brother that was not only mobile and, and practical, but was aesthetically pleasing. Uh, and that worked well. Now, when he when he went to market it, he went to uh, one of the large conference centres down in London, and I can't remember the name of it. It might it might be the ooh, conven convention centre. I'm not quite sure, but a, a very large centre that was used for this. And the national press were there. Obviously, there were big releases of of uh, new pieces of equipment. I'm just going to go slightly into the shade, I think. Um, new pieces of equipment and um, and while he was there the power of um, sponsorship is that when Natalia came onto the uh, onto his stand with him it drew the attention of the press which was marvelous so there are photographs of him uh, with Natalia and his piece of equipment and then the journalists obviously wanted to know the story behind well why is Natalia with you with, with you oh well what is it that you've designed here uh, and the photo the photograph when I saw it I laughed at him and I said she's had a bit of a Diana moment there do you remember the very unfortunate photograph with Diana uh, when she was a nanny where unfortunately you can see straight through her skirt and you can see her legs she's got a child on the hip and uh, it was perhaps one of those naive moments that she hadn't expected to be photographed that day. She'd just gone to work. Well, uh, Natalia was photographed and she had been wearing a jumper. And you could see straight through the jumper. The, it, there weren't holes in the jumper, but it looked like it with a flash photography. And you could see her bra. And my comment to him was, goodness me. I said, could she not afford a jumper with no holes in? Well, that was just my little joke. And he wiped the floor with me because he sang her praises and said, no, she was absolutely wonderful. And I just said, well, I really would have thought that, you know, she she was old enough and wise enough to know better. But it perhaps was just not a, not the wisest thing to wear that day. Uh, I have to say that when she came to the Chestershire Harbour of the Peel, uh, there were no issues with, with um, see-through jumpers that day. I've got no idea what the colour of her bra on, and I certainly had no no um, intention of asking her and mention it with that. And uh, one of those one of those uh, memories is something that I'll treasure, uh, along with my colleagues that were there. Um, I think we we were very privileged that day to to be here to be there. Um, I can't look on it as um, I'm really saddened that I haven't met Diana. Um, I'm just pleased that um, that she came along and I was invited. Now, at one point in my uh, nursing and midwifery career, I, I left my job for a year. I still stayed working for the NHS and I was working as a, as a, a bank bank staff and stayed on. There was plenty of work for me with the uh, uh, neonatal bank staff um, and to keep my hand in. But I was working as a nursing superintendent for an agency. And um, I did that for a year. I really learned a great deal doing that. It was providing uh, staff. So it was a recruitment agency and then placing uh, staff into hospitals, nursing homes, residential homes, home care. Um, and they needed, in order to get their license, they needed a registered general nurse to be, um, uh, to have the overview. And that role was a superintendent and I was their superintendent for a year. Really loved what I did, loved the people that I worked with. I say I learned a great deal. I, I experienced uh, some of the other side of, um, I did, I had to fill in sometimes when somebody uh, rang in sick at short notice and we'd promised to send an, agents, uh, an agency nurse overnight. Uh, and sometimes I went just to check out the place. They didn't know that I was the superintendent. Um, I just turned up there as the, the nurse that they expected. And um, there were a few instances where I, I saw practices that I wasn't comfortable with. I wasn't comfortable with being told by the uh, permanent staff there, uh, we don't do it that way, we do it this way. And you have to be a very strong person to actually say, 
well, you may do it that way normally, but tonight, uh, this is my responsibility and I won't be doing it that way. And I'm talking about things like uh, they would get the medicines out at about two o'clock in the morning and leave them out on a breakfast tray ready for the patients to take it the next morning. Uh, no, I didn't feel that that was safe practice. And uh, so I, I changed because I was responsible for what I did. This was my my uh, livelihood, my registration on the line. If somebody had come along and taken uh, medication or given the wrong medication to the wrong person, that was my my registration that I was risking and my reputation I was risking. So I had to be quite strong and say, well, actually, I won't be doing that tonight. I'll be doing it this way. Uh, very politely declined their offer to um, to do it the way that they normally do it. And they probably thought I was very awkward, but I didn't mind being awkward. I, I was very polite in the way I did it, but I, I know when to dig my heels in. So I can be a lamb when I need to be. Uh, and uh, I just said, yeah, yeah, I'll just do it my way. And then, and then when I got back to the office, uh, obviously you need to go to bed the next day, but when I got back to the office then, I just say, um, I had to chat with the owners and just said, uh, I don't think we'll be placing staff there anymore because I don't want to place a newly qualified member of staff that I was mentoring and, and provided, providing preceptorship for. I don't want them either ringing me in the middle of the night saying, Maggie, I've got a problem, or then put in a position that they're not quite strong enough or experienced enough to actually uh, to actually say, no, I'm really not happy about doing it that way. So I just said, yeah, when they ring up, we just we haven't got anybody available. I'm really sorry we've tried, but we haven't got anybody available for you um, today. Um, we did succession planning there um, and succession planning was about looking for uh, somebody to take my place. And uh, I'd invited somebody who'd left the practical aspect of nursing because she had a back injury a very capable young lady and uh, i rang her up one day and i said uh, i said you know you've you know you've rung up the agency because you want some it's moving out the sun it's blooming hot uh, you know you rang up the agency because you want some work i said um i've got i've got a job that might be right up your street and she said oh what's that and i said it's my job would you like it well she hot footed it ran to that agency head office and uh and I handed over to her over the course of the week um, how to do what needed to be done. And uh, and I returned then uh, full time back to a role in the NHS. And the decision to do that was um, was financial. I, I just wasn't earning enough money and uh, couldn't cope on the money. And they couldn't pay me anymore. I still kept in contact with the staff that ran the agency. And when I needed agency staff myself for home care, they were the first people that I rang because I knew them and I trusted them. I knew that they'd do a really good job. Uh, now, the funny thing was that uh, the owner of that business told me the story that uh, the first week after I'd left and gone back to the NHS, they had a phone call from somebody, I'm not going to mention who, uh, but he answered the phone. And when there was an inquiry about uh, providing staff to do some home care, um, he was a bit suspicious and he answered the phone and said, is that you, Maggie? And it wasn't, it wasn't me at all. He said, I thought it was you playing a joke on me. And he said, as soon as she said, I'm, I, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry. He said, I realised it wasn't you and had to really behave himself. He said, well, can you imagine? At that time, I had a really battered mini metro, a little navy blue mini metro. He said, can you imagine, can you imagine you turning up to that home in your battered mini metro? And I will tell you that, that they went in a much nicer car that represented the uh, agency and um, he mentioned that they went into the service entrance and they didn't even get offered a cup of tea. Now you'll find that I, I said over the many years the people that have got nothing will always offer you something and the people that have got a lot don't. So there you go.